Well, praise the Lord. I hope and pray that you were watching the past hour. We spoke with Dave Crooks, the executive director of the Evans Training Center in Inman, South Carolina. Also their chaplain and founder, Robbie Dismukes, as well as his son and uh, really uh, the, the burden bearer of the entire ministry from its inception, Ben Dismuke. This program tonight, I, I certainly and confidently believe, has brought hope and encouragement to a lot of people. There's a lot of families tonight who have, have children, they have spouses, they uh, have people in their lives who are battling addiction whether it be drugs or alcohol, and, and I don't know why we say it like that, but alcohol's a drug. Just be honest about it. It's not a drug that you have to have. But I'm telling you, there is something better than a drug. There is something better than a drink, and that is a living, loving, vital, victorious relationship with the Lord Jesus Christ. I just feel in my spirit somebody tonight needed to hear that. And please, whatever you do, don't turn the channel now. We're not here to criticize you, but we're here to evangelize you. We're not here to, uh, to browbeat you, but we're here to tell you about a Christ who can complete you. And he can bring a peace to the puzzle of your soul like nothing else in this life. You see, God has set eternity down in your soul. And there's only one, and I mean only one, element, substance that can Fill the void and the vacuum in your life. And in just a moment, I'm going to tell you exactly what that is. Call that number on the screen if you've got a prayer request or a praise report. And uh, just believe God with me tonight for His grace to continue to do an amazing work in somebody's life. I have so enjoyed Tim Hill this evening, the general overseer for the Church of God. He's going to sing now, Camp Meeting Medley. You'll be there. I was alone and idle. And I was a sinner too But I heard a voice from heaven Saying there's some work to do So I took my master's hand And I joined the heavenly band Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord Yes, I'm on the battlefield for my Lord I'm on the battlefield for my Lord I promised him that I would serve him till I die. Now I'm on the battlefield for my Lord. Oh, I want to see him look upon his face. There to sing forever of his saving grace. On the streets of glory, let me lift my voice. Cares all past home at last ever to rejoice. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory. By and by, I'll tell and sing love story. There, oh, high and with my dear Redeemer, there no more to die. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory. By and by, I'd like to stay here longer than man's allotted days and watch the fleeting changes of life's uneven ways. But if my Savior calls me, to that sweet home on high, I'll live with him forever in glory by and by. Oh, yes, I'll live in glory, glory by and by. I'll tell him 
sing love story, story. there on high and with my dear redeemer there no more to die oh yes i'll live in glory by and by some glad morning we shall see jesus in the air coming after you and me joy is ours to share what rejoicing there will be when the saints shall rise headed for that jubilee yonder in the skies oh what singing oh what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise oh what glory oh hallelujah when we meet our blessed savior in the sky when with all the heavenly host we began to sing singing in the holy ghost how the heavens will ring millions there will join the song with them we shall be praising christ through ages long heaven's jubilee oh what singing and oh what shouting on that happy morning when we all shall rise oh what glory oh Savior in the skies. Oh, what singing and oh, what shouting upon that happy morning when we all shall rise. Oh, what glory. Oh, hallelujah. When we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. When we meet our blessed Savior in the skies. I'd like for you to think with me tonight for a few minutes about being trained by saving grace. Trained by saving grace. We make reference so often to being saved by amazing grace. And certainly there's no other word for grace but amazing. And certainly... There's no other way to be saved than but by the grace of God. The Bible says in Ephesians 2, 8, For by grace you are saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. God tonight still saves people by His grace. But there's a very prevalent teaching in America right now that says you can be saved by the grace of God and uh, more or less get your fire insurance as it were and just live any way that you want to live. You can live rebellious toward God. You can romp and stomp and spit and spew in the face of a thrice holy God Ignore Him all of your days. Not just have Him on the back burner, but keep Him in the back room of the bottom basement of your heart, padlocked out of the way, so that He won't interrupt or disturb you in any way. Never darken the doors of His house, except maybe for weddings or funerals, and occasionally a Christmas service or Easter Sunday. And then spend eternity in heaven with Him forever. Now I want to ask you, what's wrong with that picture? Not just are there theological discrepancies. Not just are there some inconsistencies psychologically in conflict with the mind of Christ and the will of man. But I want to say in 
plain and simple everyday English, there are some actualities that we must be brave enough to look at. The greatest of which is if you don't really love God now, what makes you think you're going to love Him in eternity? If you don't really live for God now, what makes you think you want to live with Him forever and ever in heaven after you die? Yes, God does save us by His amazing grace. Hallelujah to the Lamb. We call that justification. I have been saved. He will take us to heaven when we die. And we'll be just like Christ. We call that glorification. But friend, I want to tell you the God who justifies and glorifies is also the God who sanctifies. And He sanctifies us by training us progressively and incessantly through the presence of His grace, which is at work in our lives. Our scripture for this evening, as we've already said and previously read, is Titus chapter 2, 11 through 12. But tonight I'm going to go beyond verse 12, and I'm also going to read verses 13 and 14. And as I read these verses, I want you to think with me about spiritual basic training. Spiritual basic training. We know there is an athletic training that takes place in many uh, camps and gyms and ball fields and uh, running tracks. There is academic training that takes place in classrooms, in study groups, and universities and colleges all over our country. But the kind of training that I'm talking about tonight is spiritual basic training. Because you see, it begins the moment that you get saved. And there's no ifs, ands, buts about it. Everybody who is in the body will have to acknowledge the fact that they too are somebody who's going to have to go through spiritual basic training. The Word of God says this, For the grace of God, that is God's riches at Christ's expense, that brings salvation has appeared to all men. God in His goodness has made it possible for all people to be saved. You say, but not everybody's going to be saved. You're exactly right. And here's why. Many are going to choose to refuse God's only remedy for being saved from their sin because many do not even believe that they have a sin problem. But you see, the Word of God makes it very, very clear that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. There is none righteous, no, not one. The wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ. Here's the good news of God's salvation. He sent His Son, Jesus, to die on a criminal's cross yonder in Palestine nearly 2,000 years ago 
buried in a borrowed tomb, but rose from the dead on the third day, never, ever, ever to die again. And he rose from the dead eternally. He rose from the dead supernally. He rose from the dead physically. He rose from the dead literally. And tonight, for all who accept Christ, we become recipients by the grace of God of eternal life. But you see, God's not going to make you get saved. God's not going to make you come to Jesus Christ in repentance of your sin and believe on Christ to be saved. You can refuse that. And if you refuse that, my friend, it'll not be some vicious, malicious God who cast you into hell, but it'll be a consequence of the choice you made to reject Jesus Christ. Because salvation, which has been wrought and accomplished by the grace of God, has appeared to all men. It is not the will of God that any man should perish, but that all should come to repentance. And when we're saved, the Word of God says that the grace of God, verse 12, begins to teach us. It begins to train us because of the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life. That denying ungodliness, ungodly talking, ungodly walking, ungodly looking, ungodly lusting, ungodly thinking, and I'm going to say it tonight, ungodly drinking. The Word of God says in 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 and 2, that we're no longer to walk like the Gentiles walk in their pagan lifestyles with drinking parties and idolatrous and iniquitous and incestuous thought and relationships. But we're to come out from among them and be separate, saith the Lord. The Word of God says that we're to draw a line in the sand, get on the right side, stay on the right side, and make no apology for standing what is right in the middle of a world that is increasingly as dark as night. The Word of God says, denying ungodliness and worldly lust. Listen to this. That's the negative. But here's the positive. We should live soberly, not allow anything to contaminate our judgment, our thought process, righteously. Righteous living is the kind of living that takes place in the life of a person who realizes that Christ could come back at just any moment. I want to ask you something. Would you continue to live the way you're living if you knew that Christ would return while you're doing what you're doing? You say, well, of course I wouldn't. Well, guess what? He could come tonight, right in the middle of what you're doing right now, or in the morning, or tomorrow, or three days from now, Jesus could come again. You say, well, when's he coming? Tell me when he's coming, and I'll make sure that I'm living right. Doesn't work like that. Be ready for the return of the Lord, because he comes in an hour that you think not. And godly in the present age. We're to live godly lives. We're to live holy lives. And I know in our church culture that some people even break out in hives when you use the H word. That H word, that four letter word, H-O-L-Y. Holy. God is holy. And he said, be ye holy, for I'm also holy. And holiness is more than external, but it's internal that's had a head-on collision with the eternal Son, 
of the living God and therefore has changed everything about us from the inside out. There is no doubt. And in so doing, we're looking for the blessed hope and glorious appearing of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am suggesting tonight, I am submitting unto you that for the person who's truly saved, there is an anticipation that is a result of the transformation that Christ has wrought in your life that is looking for and hoping for Jesus Christ to come back again just any moment. And make no mistake about it, the Christ of whom we speak is not the Christ of seeker-friendly religion. He is not the Christ of ecumenicalism. He is not the Christ of social justice. He's not the Christ of legalism. He's not the Christ of liberalism. But he is the Christ of the Bible, the Son of the living God who gave himself for us on the cross that he might redeem us from every lawless deed and purify for himself his own special people zealous for good works. I love the way this passage wraps it all up. We're saved by grace, not works. But being saved by grace causes us to work for the Lord Jesus Christ. When I was a little boy, we used to sing a song that said, We'll work, we'll work, we'll work. Till Jesus comes and God calls his children home. I pray that you're saved, rapture ready for the return of Christ tonight. But if you're not, repent of your sin. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you will be saved. God bless you. Thank you for being a part of Nightline tonight. Call that number on the screen if we can pray with you or pray for you. As Tim Hill sings us out tonight by singing, He's in the Myth. What have you done to deserve all this? Why don't you just curse God and die? What advice for a man who had trusted God most of his life? But then Job speaks as he stands among his broken down domain in the midst of it all I shall stand and not fall and bless his name in the midst of it all in the midst of it all ever come when everyone 
bows their heads to cry. And when man has done all that man can do, then I'm left alone to die. Ah, but even then, when I'm surrounded by affliction's greatest pain, In the midst of it all, I will stand and not fall and bless his name. In the midst of it all, in the midst of it all. It's a hope in Christ Jesus that not one time has ever let me fall. of it all.